Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the last video of this session. So we will uh, do a summary of what we learned in this uh, in the session. So remember, we um, in this uh, project um, we wanted to build a model for predicted churn, and uh, we wanted to use this model to score all the customers we have in our telecom company and identify those that are about to churn, and we want to stop them from doing that. Um, and if our model uh, that we will develop that we developed in this uh, uh, session, if it says that okay, this customer is going to churn, we want to send them a promotional email uh, to help them change their mind. So for that, we found a data set. Uh, um, so there is a data set on Kaggle that we used for that uh, well, that has all the information about the uh, customers. We call the demographic information, all the information about uh, the services they have, uh, how they pay the contract and so on. And uh, so what we did uh, is uh, we first prepared the data set, uh, like the usual stuff that we did uh, also in the previous lesson. Uh, there were some issues uh, that we needed to solve, uh, some uh, issues with uh, so we need to do some data cleaning. Then we set up the validation framework. It was a little bit different. So instead of implementing it ourselves, like we did in the previous session, we did we use uh, scikit-learn for that. And that's why we needed to split uh, the data frame, uh, the data set that we have two times instead of uh, doing the three-way split immediately. Um, then we did some uh, exploratory data analysis. Uh, and uh, in particular, what we did, we spent quite a lot of time talking about feature importance. So first we talked about uh, churn rain and risk ratio. So risk ratio uh, for a categorical variable tells us how likely uh, customers within this uh, group are to churn compared to the overall population. And this gives us quite a few insights, uh, like which variables or which subsets of our users are uh, more prone to chur churning or less prone to churning. Um, then we looked at uh, mutual information. Mutual information is a way to uh, have one number that, uh, so mutual information tells us how much we learn about churn variable by learning the values of um, some categorical variables. Um, and it just gives us a way to understand uh, relative importance of different variables. So we know using module information, we know that uh, contract is more important than um, partner and partner as a variable is more important than gender. So gender is uh, quite useless uh, as it turned out, uh, yeah, like it's the least useful variable. So then we also talked about correlation as a way of measuring the importance of numerical variables. Um, and uh, yeah, remember that positive correlation means that if a variable increases, uh, it leads to increase in churn rate as well. And if uh, we have a negative correlation increase in the value leads uh, to decrease in churn rate. Um, so both kind of correlations are useful, especially if they're like uh, medium or strong correlations, then they're useful for our models. Then we talked about one hold encoding, which is a way of encoding categorical features. And uh, we use dictionary vectorizer from scikit-learn for implementing that. Then we talked about logistic regression, which is um, a model for uh, the binary classification problem. And our problem is a binary classification. So we have positive classes, people who churned, negative classes, people who didn't churn. And uh, well, yeah, we want to build a model for predicting that uh, existing customers are going to churn. And for that, uh, so the, we saw that uh, logistic regression is very similar to linear regression, except it adds this sigmoid before computing the, the output. And sigmoid is a function that uh, converts any number. Uh, it brings it uh, to a range between 0 and 1. And we treat this number as probability. Then we saw how to train a logistic regression model with scikit-learn. Um, so all we need to do is just use this dot fit uh, function, and then uh, the rest, uh, like scikit-learn, takes care of the rest. And then we spent some time talking about how we can interpret the coefficients from logistic regression. So we be, we trained a smaller model that can uh, that contained only three features: contact, tenure, and monthly charges. 
and uh, yeah so this is what we did and finally we trained a bigger model and then tested it on uh, a few users so this is what we did for this lesson uh, for this session and uh, actually in the next session what we will do is we will continue working on this problem we will continue working on the churn prediction model and we will look at different ways of evaluating the performance of binary classification models so so far we looked only at accuracy and uh, so we saw that our model is 80 percent accurate in the next session we will answer if we will find out if 80 percent is actually good what does it mean to be 80 percent accurate and what are the other ways of evaluating uh, binary classification models and uh, of course check uh, this uh, 3.14 um, lesson if you want to explore more about uh, this topic so see you